All right, hello. My name is Julia Cartwright. I'm also a National Instruments with Gratian. Um, so today I'm going to talk about using Cochinella to find nested execution context violations. Um, but uh, before I get into that, I, I want to make it known that yes, I'm going to be talking about Cochinella, and yes, my first name is Julia, but I'm not Julia the Wall. I mention this only because about once every six months, someone pings me on IRC asking me a question um, that only Julia the Wall would know. Um, so we, we get, and, and I'm, I'm wondering if she also has people confusing, um, confusing us as the two Julias that work on the kernel. Um, so uh, I wanted to start off by asking how many people here are on Linux RT users and follow the Linux RT users list, because I imagine it's most of you, I would hope. Um, if you're not following this mailing list, I would suggest you do so. Um, it's pretty low traffic, um, lots of interesting problems that, <laughs> yeah, low traffic, in, okay. That's a relative term, uh, but it's, it's not that bad. Um, and uh, yeah. So I wanted to talk about uh, a few, if you follow it long enough, you'll see that there's a clear pattern in problems that people are running into with preempt RT. Um, and I'm gonna talk about uh, the problems that are hit and using static analysis tools like Cochinella to, to uh, resolve them in some meaningful way. Um, so this is a, an example of one such bug report that came out of the mailing list. Um, so here, uh, you can see that bug sleeping function called from invalid context at kernel locking RT mutex. Um, and then if you follow the stack trace, you see that uh, add stripe bio function was called. It tries to acquire RT spin lock, but because it's running with IRQs disabled, uh, that's an invalid operation uh, to perform uh, with interrupts disabled. So from there, um, if you were gonna actually dive in and figure out what the hell's going on here, um, you would start looking at this add stripe bio call, which is in the RAID 5 code. This has since been fixed, but this is a few months ago. Um, and this is also just one representation of bug. Uh, there's a lot of bugs that get filed, I think, that's just related to using um, RT spin locks um, in places that they, they shouldn't be used. Um, so in, if you dive into that uh, RAID 5 code, um, this is kind of what it looks like. Um, in this case, you have add stripe bio, that's the function that actually is, is manifest in the call stack. Um, it calls this lock all function. And in lock all function, you have local IRQ disable followed by um, acquiring a bunch of spin locks in an array. This isn't the exact code. This has been changed since then. Um, there's also a similar unlock all um, function that I've um, not put here just to make it clear. Um, and so clearly there's this pattern. You have an explicit local IRQ disable and then your acquired spin lock from within that region in which interrupts are disabled. Um, and so, because I'm imagining most of you already understand why this is a problem, I did want to put this summary up here in case you weren't clear. Um, this is the most concise way I could express this, is that code executing within a local IRQ disable, like your local IRQ enable regions, runs with interrupts disabled on the local CPU, and invoking schedule, schedule either implicitly or explicitly when interrupts are disabled um, is a context violation. That's what the, the config uh, debug atomic sleep is going to tell you. Um, and then uh, thirdly, spin lock, imp spin lock implicitly invokes schedule um, on RT uh, with sleeping spin locks. And so therefore, code executing within an IRQ's disabled region must not use spin lock. Any questions about that? That's a lot of words up there, sorry. Um, so that was one example. I'm gonna set that example aside. I'm gonna look at another example that's very common to happen on the RT users list. Um, this is, a very similar related issue, the debugging information is a little less uh, verbose because debug atomic sleep wasn't enabled in this kernel config, um, but it's very similar. You can see that this MSM GPIO IRQ act function is called and it tries to acquire this RT spin lock and the RT spin lock is invalid to be invoked because uh, interrupts are disabled at this point, which I just happen to know because if you look here, we're in the middle of, of uh, interrupt dispatching. Um, and interrupt dispatching happens in hard interrupt context. So if you look at the code for MSM GPIO or IRQ AC, G MSM GPIO IRQ AC, um, you can see that it looks like this. There's, here's the function definition up here, and then you see that it's doing some pointer manipulation to get to this P control object, and then it's acquiring the lock and releasing the lock um, using the spin lock IRQ save and IRQ restore flavors. Um, now, this, is, this case is a little bit different than the prior one. This is a violation, 
um, because I happen to know that MSM GPO IRQAC is invoked in hard interrupt context, but there is no, if I just looked at this function, that context is not made explicit by the use of a local IRQ disable or local IRQ enable. So that presents some interesting uh, challenges for uh, Cochinella, which I'll talk about. So this is my variation of that same problem summary in this case where uh, instead of the explicit local IRQ disable, um, we just happen to know that code and interrupt dispatch is invoked in hard interrupt context. And it's, a, it's a, um, similarly a context violation to acquire a spin lock within that region. Um, I, one conclusion I draw from this is I don't think driver developers really understand when to use spin lock and when to use raw spin lock. I don't think that's well understood. Um, and uh, so often the, the proposed fitches, fixes um, to these bugs that pop up is, well, we'll, we'll just convert this to a raw spin lock, right? Because that's what, you know, that's what you do. And that's, that's not good for RT. <laughs> so, so I think there's, a, there's some gaps here. Um, let's go to, does someone have a comment? No, okay. Uh, so my, my, next, my next was a, this happened just a few weeks ago. This is also on the RT users list. Um, is Arnaldo here? See, I've never met him before, okay. Um, so he posted this, and this has been a long ongoing thread on the RT users list. Um, this was code in some infinite band driver, and those infinite, infinite band people are crazy, uh, but it was broken in RT because they made explicit use of this preempt disable. So the way that they were doing their locking is they were acquiring some lock, and then from within that lock region, uh, doing a preempt disable, and then doing a spin unlock with the intention that preemption would be uh, continued to be disabled outside of the, the spin lock protected region. Um, and this is broken R RT for a number of reasons. Um, and one of the reasons is why are you doing, why are you using preempt disable? Um, but this is another context violation or can be. Uh, and that's, this is not a unique problem to this driver. I decided to go like, well, I'm gonna look in the driver's tree and see what interesting uses of preempt disable are there. Um, so this is one such example. Um, this one I don't even understand uh, why the preemption is disabled here. Um, uh, there's, it, it's actually kind of scary to look at pre disabled in driver's tree. Um, if, yeah, so, so okay, on mainline, this handler is invoked in hard interrupt context in which preemption is implicitly disabled. Um, but then they decided to disable, you know, make preemption even more disabled for some reason, I don't know. Um, and also, why disable it across the task load schedule? It doesn't make sense. Um, so that's, that's interesting. I would like to be able to detect these cases and kind of analyze them further. Um, so uh, here's my second point here, is that driver developers don't understand when to use preempt disable. Um, I think that's, that's uh, pretty clear. Um, and uh, a more general case, <laughs> which I've, I've presented evidence, is that I don't think driver developers really under, understand RT. And so as a bit of an aside, I decided to look like the evolution of these API, like the usage of these APIs and the driver, team, driver tree over time. So on the x-axis here is the kernel releases since the, the get, um, since we first had get. And uh, this is kind of difficult to read, I think, for some of you. Um, but this top line is the usage of local IRQ save um, in the driver's tree. And then this green line is local IRQ disable. And uh, down here, you can see preempt disable kind of like slowly rising in this red <coughs> over time. Uh, similarly, there's uh, local BH disable kind of slowly writing, uh, writing up. And this big spike here is, is, the, is the only API included in this list that, that implicitly messes with execution context, which is the raw spin lock. Um, and the raw spin lock wasn't in introduced until 2.6.33 into, main, into mainline. Um, so you can kind of see that slow growth. Um, so anyway, I thought that was interesting. Um, so there's some things we can do if we, if we think that like driver developers don't um, understand RT. There's some tools that could be used to help them out. Historically, we've gone to runtime tools. Um, we've used uh, LockDep as has caught a lot of issues that exist in mainline, but to help RT. Um, I think there's an education gap clearly that needs to be uh, overcome, which is what every driver developer should know about RT. Um, and I've already engaged some of you for, for comments and feedback about what that education should be like. Um, but for the sake of this presentation, I only intend to cover uh, some of the stuff I've worked with in Cochinella. So if we go back to that first example I gave where we had a spin lock um, 
I guess before I get even further, how many of you have used Cochinella or know what Cochinella is? Okay. Two questions. There's two questions. Okay, I'll ask one. How, how many of you have used Cochinella? Okay, that's more than I thought. And uh, how many of you know, don't know what Cochinella is? We'll go that way. Okay, so Cochinella is a static analysis tool. It's, it's produced by uh, Julia Lawal and her research team. Um, and it effectively allows uh, us kernel developers to, to make, um, to do some uh, static analysis effectively uh, and look at control flow graphs and, and determine whether um, specific uh, conditions are held. Um, so in this case, applying that tool, a tool like Cochinella to this problem set is what I really want to look for, is I want to look for in a single function, if I ever invoke local IRQ disable and then I take a spend lock, then that's a context violation. I can determine that statically. As long as I haven't invoked local IRQ disable and then local IRQ enable and then acquired a spin lock. And so how you ex express this relationship in the Cochinella language, which is really difficult for most of you to read, to, but I imagine, um, but hopefully you can find my, my slides later on and, and uh, dive in. Um, but how you express that um, wanting to see when a spin lock is acquired is you use this, uh, so the top here is kind of boilerplate. Um, the, the bulk of it is right in this region here where I'm saying, okay, I'm looking for a local IRQ disable or a local IRQ safe when it's not followed by local IRQ enable or local IRQ restore. So this, this basically, this dot, dot, dot expands to any statements in that, in that control flow. Um, yeah, I don't know, we'll see if I can, sorry. Well, this is your fault for sitting in the back, Steve. <laughs> See, I don't know that I can. Okay, I don't know that I can. Sorry, Steve. We, I would happily talk talk to you afterwards if you want to see that through the details. Um, uh, so if you run this, if you if you if you uh, so there's two there's actually more, there's four use use cases of uh, the Cochinella tool, but this is a report. This is the report mode of Cochinella, which is just like give me all the matches. And if you look at this, there's 38 violations of this rule um, in 4.14 RC5, the latest RC release. Um, and if you do that same analysis on RT, um, this is the latest RT release, there's still 22 violations in the kernel tree, um, which I'm not intending you to look at all of these in details, but you can actually see that we still have some work to do in RT if we want to actually eliminate all of these. Um, and some of these are non-trivial to, to fix because it requires some understanding of the, the um, reasons why a driver developer has made the decision to use local IRQ disable, um, but some avenues for further analysis. Um, so I'm gonna talk about the case that's, that's a little bit more complex, um, which is this MSM GPIO, MSM GPIO IRQ act function. So if you remember this one before, um, in this case you have uh, the, the function name here, and in this control flow, I've acquired spin lock, except there's a problem. If I wanted to apply the previous patch I had developed, I have nothing to match on. I have no local IRQ disable, like explicit uh, context um, function in here that I can write a patch to match against. Um, so instead, I have to get a little clever um, in how I construct this patch. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to use two features of Cochinella that I don't think are really very well wide understood. Um, Cochinella allows you to specify dependent rules. So you can say, okay, here's a match, here's a match, and this one depends on this one. Um, and any meta variables which are matched in the, in the parent, if you will, is available as a, as a value to the child. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like here. And it's probably getting, the font's going to get smaller, and Steve's going to kill me. But uh, <laughs> so the strategy in, in this particular case is to declare two rules: uh, one rule which matches functions with which ex execute with interrupts disabled, and then a second rule that depends on the first rule that then uses the typical control flow analysis to detect when a context violation occurs. So those are two se separate and very distinct um, uh, rules. Now, the first one's kind of interesting because it's like, how do you match functions with execute with interrupts disabled? And there's no clean, easy way to do that. Um, so what I did was I looked at um, 
well, okay, so I know that any IRQ chip implementation is going to implement this IRQ ACK callback. And I want to be able to look at any, any function that is pointed to by this IRQ ACK member in an IRQ chip struct. So basically, I'm going to construct a, a Cochinella patch that will generalize this pattern, generalized over the name of the IRQ chip and the name of the IRQ ACK function. OK? Uh, because I want to be running this across many different IRQ chip implementations. And so that rule, that rule one, is actually fairly easy to define in the Cochinella language. I say um, I have, uh, I'm generalizing over these identifiers, which one is the name of the IRQ chip, and the other is the name of the function being pointed to. And then if you ever, Cochinella, if you ever see the situation where you have some static IRQ chip object um, that points, the IRQ ACK member points to this underscore underscore IRQ ACK um, meta variable, then please bind, bind the value of that function name to this IRQ ACK meta variable in uh, Cochinella. And then if, you, if I talk about my strategy, my strategy is then to use that in the second, the name of that function that being pointed to um, to implement my, my uh, control flow analysis. So from here, if I, this is my rule two, this is rule two, depends on rule one. Um, and you can, if you use identifier rule one dot IRQ dot underscore ACK, this is the meta variable that was bound by rule one. So effectively I know that, that this IRQ, it makes available that IRQ ACK meta variable in my subsequent matches. So then from here, um, the IRQ ACK function I know is going to be bound to, for example, MSMGPIO IRQ ACK. Um, and then from there, I can do the, the typical, okay, well, is, is there any callers that spin lock IRQ save, spin lock IRQ, spin lock, um, and any control flow within this IRQ ACK, fu ACK function. And then, so if you run that against mainline today um, and RT, there's actually five, five violations that exist, and these are non-trivial to fix. I, turns out when I first did this patent, when I first started doing it using Cochinella, I solved like 30 of these problems, um, and uh, there's five remaining that are, well, I haven't looked at them in great detail, and they were non-trivial to fix. Yeah? Does that, does that only detect direct, um, does that detect uses of, of that in the, the function directly called by that, or the whole call stack? Only in the functions that are called by it, yeah. So it's, it's one of the limitations, yeah. And also because I had to choose my anchor point as being some arbitrary, like, I happen to know that IRQ ACK is invoked in hard interrupt context. Right. right now, this patch is written is only covering that use case. There are many functions that if are that, like implicitly invoked in hard interrupt if context. If that yeah. function called another function that did this, it wouldn't. It yeah, wouldn't unless, it's, it. unless it's available, because I think Cochinelle actually works at like a, a compilation unit, okay. Um, okay. by compilation unit. So if it's like in an inline function or something, then yeah, it would be caught. But if, it's, if it has to cross a function call boundary okay. um, then in code, then it's not going to work. Um, so solving these that I mentioned before, using raw spin locks um, and converting to raw spin locks is one thing you can do. Um, and uh, so I'm going to talk about how, for a lot of these cases, um, just actually doing the raw spin lock conversion is just mean like stupid, uh, busy work. Um, and so I wanted to learn more about Cochinella and, and actually have Cochinella generate me patches. Um, so I'm going to talk about using patch mode of Cochinella to actually give me a patch for all the IRQ chip implementations that are using spin lock, convert them to using raw spin lock. Now I'm going to say this with one caveat, is that, like I said before, converting to raw spin locks is not going to just so magically solve all of your problems. You need to be very deliberate about when you use raw spin locks. But it was a, it was a good avenue for me to learn about uh, Cochinella patch mode. So this is the strategy we had before. We had rule one, which is match functions with, which run with interrupts disabled. And then rule two, which is use that match function um, and seek patterns within its body. So if we go back to this example, um, I want to, if I want to be able to change this spin lock to raw spin lock, then I also need to understand uh, where the spin lock is defined. Um, and I can get that statically from this data here um, if I can parameterize across this struct MSM pin control, like basically any type, and a member name. 
So if I have those two pieces of information, then I can use Cochinella and have it convert to a raw spin lock. Um, and, then, uh, and then also the, the, the straightforward control flow analysis to rewrite the actual raw, the spin lock to raw spin lock. So, if I, so basically I need to generalize rule two, like I said, to generalize over this, this uh, pin control type and the member name. Um, so the way I can do that is to augment rule two. So I need to capture the type and member name of the relevant lock um, that then I can use further into uh, rule three. So rule three is going to use the, the type name that I've captured and the member name that I've captured to actually generate the, the diff hunk for rewriting the, the spin lock to raw spin lock. Um, and rule four uses the type and member name to generate uh, hunks for updating the spin lock callers. So that's on the calling side. So I'm not going to go into great detail here, but I basically, in order to augment that, this would be good to study in your notes later, um, to augment that, I needed to declare this new type T that I'm going to bound to, bind to, and then these two new identifiers. One, the L in particular is the lock name, the lock member name um, of, the, of type T, or in the struct defined by type T. Um, and so from there, I just modify this to uh, the actual function match to look at, well, anytime you have a pointer to a type T, uh, and then you, uh, yeah, so, so yeah, generalizing over that, uh, every time you have a pointer named X to a type T, and that type T has a member lock known as L, then match this, this match. Um, and so that gives me enough context. So if, when this match hits, then I know type T, uh, I know the lock member type L. And uh, so from there, then it's, it's pretty straightforward. This was a, a trick that I, I kind of just discovered. I, don't, I didn't see any, any examples in the Cochinella patches that do this. Um, but uh, you can actually rewrite members just by putting this T here, where T is like the type that I've matched in rule two. And then somewhere within that struct definition, you have this member known as L, and you can use the minus plus in the semantic patch language to actually generate your diff. And then from the uh, control flow side, you already kind of saw this where I was matching uh, spin lock, but instead of using, instead of just matching, I'm gonna, I'm gonna generate a diff, so there's a minus and a plus. That's pretty much it there. Um, limitation, uh, one was mentioned um, about how it doesn't, it, 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 well, one, one was mentioned that this is limited to a single compilation unit, so that cross-function calls it, that doesn't really track. Um, uh, secondly, it doesn't eliminate all the hard work. In fact, like, you could look at this and say, well, you could just use said and just like, fix this. Um, that's true, I could have, but uh, Cochinella is fun. Uh, right now, I'm only looking at IRQ chip callbacks, but maybe this is an avenue where if we could enu better enumerate patches, like state like callbacks that we know implicitly are invoked in specific contexts, then we can further augment these patches um, to match more. So with that, I know I just kind of like brain dumped a bunch of stuff, but uh, if anyone has any questions about what I did here or where I'm going or other things you think that might be useful for this sort of analysis, that'd be great. I think yeah. I have a lot more work with this than you can handle. Mike? Oh, I have a lot more work with uh, In what way? Microphone. Yes. Please use the microphone for questions because the guys uh, on the stream and YouTube can understand the uh, non-mic questions. So I think it's awesome, first and foremost. Uh, I also think that with something like this, you're getting a lot of work, uh, potentially a lot more than you can handle. I, I'm uh, not disagreeing with you, yeah. But these problems just don't, I mean, they're there, right? So they need to be taken care of. The, the problem is that, like each of these cases, I mean, I told you that I, I, I ran the patch against and like generated patches across like um, 30 different IRQ chip implementations and, and fixed those up. But each of those required me to go in and audit like every critical section for each lock. Like, is this really doing minimal bounded work and so on? Which that, that takes a lot of the effort. I think Thomas mentioned something before. It's like, well, you could, um, I forget the case we were talking about, timers. Like knowing, knowing when things should be HR timers or not. It's still the same thing. It requires analysis. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, so yeah. Other questions? So is anybody else?
concerned about the number of Ross bin lock usages in the kernel? And so should we that be looking most, at this problem the other way? <laughs> <laughs> so most of that spike, like at least the spike in the past few releases, was me actually fixing the bugs that I caught by this tool. Um, but I keep a regular eye on the usage of uh, Ross bin locks in the kernel. So uh, uh, actually, it's not, I, I didn't find anything too bad in the, in the last couple of years. So there was one user using an arc spin lock in some driver code, which was uh, anyway broken. So, but that's just because people do not know anything about locking, and they use the first file they, they find random, so randomly selected and copy something. So, yeah, you can't avoid that kind of problem. But in general, yes, the, the amount of crap in the code in the kernel is insane. So this is going to be not only for RT. I mean, uh, we're doing uh, a lot of cleanup and, and overhaul in the kernel all the time. And we just keep, have to keep that going. If RT is accelerating that, to some extent, fine. But yeah, it's a huge task, but we have to do it. No way around it. Yeah. Having better tools to identify problematic cases, I think, is yeah. useful. It's also the question if some of these things should not start going into um, the process side of how patches are submitted, because I think um, culture check and sometimes not even check patches being run on some of the patches that are in RT, so that might need to be fixed on the process side. Yep. Any other questions? I'm happy to show you my tiny text uh, afterwards if you'd like to see it, and show, show, show you how these tools work in action, too, if you're curious. Great. Well, thank you so much.